All right, it is 7.03. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I'm sorry it is a Sunday evening. It just seemed to be the only time in everyone's NLRL premiere schedule that would be the most convenient. So I uh, apologize for it being a Sunday night, but I'm excited to have you all in here. If you do not know me, I am Octavia Saunders. I am the college recruiting coordinator. Hopefully I have uh, introduced myself to you all by now, but if you don't, I am here to help anyone that wants to go and play in college um, who have been the le level one girls. So um, we'll get going here soon. I will say the presentation is a bit wordy, but um, we are going to give it to you guys as a resource. So it will be in the resources tab. So anytime you have a question or feel like you're not sure you can just click on that present up uh, the presentation and then reference from there but we'll get going here also as we're going through slides if you have a question just raise your hand and then uh type it in the chat um and then i, I can answer it from there but if you could all just keep your mics on mute so there's no background noise going on but excited to have you here and we'll we'll get going hopefully it won't be longer than uh, 45 minutes Can I, um, please let me know if you guys can see can see this someone just uh, unmute quickly let me know they can see it we can see it great thank you <laughs> all right All right, so we'll, we'll get right into it. So this is the contents. We're, we have ten, 10 different chapters. Um, us, we want to provide you all with the opportunity um, to educate and guide you through this overwhelming experience. And it continues to get more and more overwhelming as the landscape keep cha keep cha keeps changing. So we're here to help and guide you through it all so if you ever have any questions please 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 reach out that is what i'm here to help help you do so we'll get right into it um all right so this is a uh, our player pathway okay so you guys are all in level one right here at the top of this this pathway so this is a fusion pathway um the higher you get on this pathway the uh, more exposure will, you will get from college coaches. So if, you, if, if you're on that premier team, it, are you pushing yourself to get onto the RL team to be a little bit more seen? If you're on that RL team, are you pushing yourself a little bit extra to try and get yourself on that NL team? So the, more, the higher level you play, the more exposure to college coaches you will have. Um, but there is no promises for any level one player that they will be recruited at their first choice school. It's generally all about the right fit. We want to find the right fit for you through social, soccer, and academic. Again, if there's any questions as we go through this, please just, uh, just, just raise your hand or uh, unmute and just, just let me know. Uh, okay, so this is just some breakdown of the numbers. So there is over 330 Division One programs in the country. Each program generally has around about 14 scholarships, and there's 26 to 28 on the roster, um, and that's Division One. So many institutions are not fully funded. It may, mostly, you're looking at a partial scholarship. Um, so, so, so it's. Don't, don't expect those full rides to just come. There's a majority of players are not on full rides. 
they're on just partial scholarships. Um, and then there's a breakdown of Division Two, have a bit less scholarships, so there's more to compete for. And then Division Three, they have no athletic scholarship, but they do have merit and academic. They have high high academic and merit scholarships. And then NAI and JUCO, they have that in between. Some some programs will have it on the higher end. Some programs on the lower end. Uh, it's just about doing your research and kind of communicating with the coach on that part. Um, all right. So this is the, the numbers breakdown. Average number of recruits brought in each year to each institution is around about six. Okay, there's approximately 330 Division One programs. So 330 times six, that's almost 2,000 players will play Division One soccer per year. Um, so 2,000 out of 100,000 female high school seniors that are currently playing in the US. And then you add on top of that players coming from overseas too. So that's just a breakdown of who you're competing against to play at the high level. There is a lot of other female soccer players out there that you have to beat out. You have to compete. So that kind of puts it into perspective of um, the level that you need to be hitting and how many players you are competing against. All right. Oh, sorry, I did my. Sorry, did it go off? No, you're still good. I'm still there. Okay. I can't see my, the window's gone on my end. There it is. Okay. So this is a recruiting calendar. Um, a Division one, no coach can communicate, no Division one coach can communicate with you about recruiting until June 15th going into your junior year. Okay, so um, they can only reach out to you for ID camps, um, clinics and stuff like that. So they cannot actively recruit you until you're going into your junior year on June 15th um, and then for visiting to campus for making a, an official visit or receiving an offer it is August 1st so they cannot do any official visits or they cannot offer you any scholarship until after August 1st of your junior year in division one division two is a little bit different it's all June 15th, so you can, they can contact you and you can have an official visit and they can give you an offer after June 15th going into your junior year. Division three, even more different, less rules. Um, so they can actually make an offer to you at any time as it's a roster spot because they do not give you athletic aid. Um, and you can have an official visit after January 1st of your junior year. So it's a, it's a bit of a breakdown of the, how the calendar looks. So don't get discouraged if you're not getting reached out to before June 15th of your junior year. They cannot contact you about recruiting. Okay, recruiting timeline. What should I be doing? So as a freshman right now, what you're trying to do is kind of build your college fit finder profile at, at the games. We'll have brochures at every game, every um, showcase, uh, every tournament. We'll have your brochure. So make sure that information is correct. So when coaches are starring you, they know who they need to reach out to. So start building your college fit finder profile. Speak to your club coach about aspirations and where you currently fit within your team and within the framework of your desired collegiate level. Really focus on developing your game. I would get out to an ID clinic or camp and put yourself against the older players who are being recruited at those institutions. Begin thinking about your list of schools. What is important to you? 
what do you want out of your college experience? So th those are the things you should start doing as a freshman. If you really want to go and play in college and have those aspirations, that's kind of what you're starting to focus on right now is developing that list, get yourself to an ID cl clinic, pin yourself up against their recruits because every ID clinic they generally have their incoming recruits at the ID clinic. So can you get amongst that and see what level you're at? Are you competing against them? What do you need to do for, to your game to get you at their level? All right, sophomores, build your list of 20 to 30 programs. So understand that more schools outside of your list might become interested in you. That's great, but just start thinking about what's important to you and start really building your list out. Start creating a plan to experience many of these schools for ID clinics and visits. Register for the NCAA Eligibility Center. So if anyone doesn't know what that is, you must have an NCAA eligibility number to be recruited to be recruited at Division One and Division Two. Division Three, you do not need that, but at Division One and Division Two, you must have an NCAA eligibility center. And at the end of the presentation, there's a resources tab for the um, link to that website. You just go through every step on that website and your guidance counselor at your high school should be able to help you with this. And you just, it's a tedious process, but you've got to go through and it's basically telling them that you are an amateur and you have not got paid professionally to play soccer. Um, so if you want to be recruited at Division One, Division Two, you should really get on top of that at your sophomore year. Uh, collaborate with college recruiting coordinator, that's me, and club coach to open lines of communication with coaches and help them find the right fit for you. So it's really important for you guys to be communicating with us. That way we can help you. So communicate with your coach, communicate with me, let, let us know what your aspirations are, what schools you are interested in, and how we can help you get there. So please, please, please communicate with your coach and communicate with me. And we're here to help and guide you. Uh, invite them, invite coaches to watch you come and play. So that's sending your schedule, start building a highlight video and attach your soccer resume. So, so it's, it's good to start getting in a habit of sending your schedules out to coaches. Even though they cannot openly communicate with you, they can come and watch you play. And that way you're getting yourself on their radar. Um, if possible, take the SAT and the ACT for the first time. That way you just get an understanding of where you're currently at. And a lot of schools will already have what you need. They will have up on their website what you need to get in. All right, junior year. On June 15th, going into your junior year, Division One, Division Two coaches can start contacting you about recruitment. So you want to start narrowing your list down to 15 to 20 schools, but still have an open mind about other schools that may be interested in you and might reach out. Constant communication with college recruitment coordinator and club coach about updates in the process. So as coaches are reaching out to you, please let us know. Or if a school comes on your list, please let us know. Um, attend ID clinics, push hard for phone calls and visits. So it doesn't just have to be the coach to get you on the phone. You can ask, hey, I'd love to chat. Love to chat with you on the phone and talk to you about your program at your school. You know, you, you have to start recruiting yourself. So don't don't just put it on the coaches. Oh, he hasn't asked me. You you ask them, hey, I, I'm, I'm planning on being around in the area on this date. We'd love to meet you. We, we're, tr we're trying to visit a school. We're going to be in and around that area. If you have any free time, we'd love to meet you. So setting up visits that way is good too. And then regularly update in your highlight video. All right, senior year, reach out by the phone to your target schools. Clarif get clarification from those coaches if they are interested in you or not, because you do not want to waste time with schools that are not interested in you. So getting clarification is really important. Uh, complete your FAFSA, that was in October. Uh, if anyone don't know what your FAFSA is, it's that financial aid piece. That will help you determine how much money you could potentially get from the government. So that will help you figure out how much is this total cost of the school going to be. Um, keep on top of application deadlines, apply for outside scholarships, 
gain maximum understanding of each school, visits and research. If you're committed, focus, focus on continuing to develop. Okay, you've got to continue to develop your game if you're committed. Just because you're committed doesn't mean you're done, right? Because you want to earn your spot when you get there. You want to be starting when you get there, right? You want to be trying to get as much playing time as possible when you get there. So you have to continue to develop your game to develop your game. So as you do step into that college environment, you're ready. And then NLI si signing day is in February. It was actually in November. So that is a that needs to be changed. OK, preparing the process. So before recruitment, this is what you start. You need to start thinking about your grades are so important. You must stay on top of your grades. This comes first because coaches look at that first. If, if, if they think you're going to hurt their, their team GPA or you're not going to be a good student, and they have to carry you through. They might not waste their time with you. OK, so really focus on getting your, your grades up. Good GPA practice good habits because your grades will also determine how much scholarship how much academic scholarship you can get from the school and that will help the college coach figure out how much athletic aid do I need to give you all right athletic preparation train and prepare more days of the week than not if you want to play in college you will train six out of seven days a week train or play six out of seven days a week um so you will your train your train monday tuesday maybe have a game wednesday train again thursday friday game saturday sunday off you know and, and in the, and then amongst that you're also doing weight training so make sure you are hitting that environment yourself before you get there so training more days than not not just turning up monday tuesday and wednesday for your fusion training you've got to do stuff outside on your own <clears throat> work on your technical work at game speed practice ball striking set pieces cardiovascular endurance you can use our sports performance coach as a resource and watch the game as much as you can really indulge yourself in that soccer culture the supply of college collegiate players is significantly higher than the demand of players each year. So, you, again, we're talking about you're competing against a lot of other female soccer players. How are you going to set yourself above them? Like, how are you going to make yourself stand out? You have to start putting this stuff into your into your habits. All right. Before so the, these are the three three kind of concepts that as you're developing your list as you're fig, figuring out what do I want out of my college experience the, these are kind of the three things that you have to look at right is it is it does it academically fit me if you want to go and be an engineer um, then you're going to have to look at schools that have engineering. Right. If you want to be a nurse, maybe you're looking at schools with nursing. Uh, so does the school fit what I want to do as a profession? Your decision is based on a 40 year choice, not just a four year choice. Right. It's it, you're there for an education. So so make sure that if you know what you want to do as a career, does that does the school fit what you you want to do? Uh, social and professional fit. So you got to take into consideration your individual happiness. Like, does the location fit you? If you are someone that loves the mountains and you end up in, a, in Atlanta and in an urban city, then that doesn't really make you happy, right? So, so, so think about what's important to you. What do you want out of your experience? Do you want a small school? Do you want a big school with football team? You know, so are you going to be happy there? Imagine if you got injured and soccer was an option, will you still be happy there? And then thirdly, is the soccer fit? Ask yourself, can I really play at this institution?
especially as it is a big part of your identity, you'll make sacrifices to put a lot into your soccer career at Fusion, right? You train three days a week, games on weekends. Like, it is a big part of who you are. So are you going to be able to go there and make an impact? Are you going to be able to go there and play? So those are the three three areas that you want to consider as you're making your choice. Is it the right fit for you? Academically, socially, and software-wise. All right, I'm not gonna read all this out, but um, just a few things to consider as a soccer fit is you have to recruit yourself too, right? Um, what level will I be successful at? What, what, what role will I have on this team? How much will I see the field? Is that important to you or not? Um, what's the history of the program? Do they, are they a winning program? Are they struggling right now? Do they have a new coach? How's the team? Is the team culture good? Or are they, um, if you go on a visit and you just see that they're not very nice to each other, is that something you want to be a part of? You know, So these are kind of areas that you need to ask yourself um, as you go on visits and stuff like that and really take note of like, oh, yeah, I, I really like this coaching staff. But remember, college coaches uh, change quite often, right? So so that can't be, oh, I love the coaching staff, that's why I want to go there. Because um, it, is, it, is, it is a career that um, changes quite regularly, you know? So that can't be the sole reason that you choose a school, you know? But these are definitely areas that you should be asking as your visits, oh, do I like the team? Do I like the coaching staff? Do I like the culture? Is this is this a program I want to be a part of? All right, financials. This might be more for your uh, guardians and parents, but um, it is an important part of the decision, especially as the cost of co of college is becoming more and more expensive every year. So between the increase of tuition, room and board, every year amount, the dollar amount is going up. So are you doing everything you can to get the best best deal for you? And you might have two, op two school options, right? But athletically, you might be getting, let's say, 50%. Get a 50% athletic scholarship. Um, School two, you might be getting just a 25% athletic scholarship, but their tuition cost is less and their academic merit scholarship is higher. So even though you got a higher percentage of athletic scholarship, the overall total cost of the school is actually cheaper with option two just because of the final package. Right. So that, that's areas that you got to look at. Don't just, OK, well, they're giving me more athletic scholarship. OK, well, let's see the total breakdown of how much it's going to cost. Um, is there any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Are we all good? I hope we're all still there. OK. Um, all right. Positive student athlete experience. This is I think one of the most important areas um, of college, of being a collegiate athlete, is how is your student athlete experience? Um, because you want that four years to really be a positive one, right? Because it could be the last four years you play soccer. I love, like, we all want to go pro, but there's there's one percent of Division One athletes that that play pro. So you want to be in an environment that you really enjoy. You're competing, um, and you just are thriving. You know, so athletic skills and strategy. Did I develop my sports abilities, knowledge, and performance as a result of my partic participation? So did I? Is this a program where I'm going to be able to get better as a soccer player? Uh, personal growth. Did I? become a better human? Did I learn new skills? Did I put new, did I take what I'm learning from this program and um, playing 
soccer to my everyday life and enhancement of overall educational experience. Okay, did your athletic participation make your time at your college more enjoyable, productive and successful? For example, is there study hall? Do they provide tutors to the athletes? You know, what is the team GPA? Is that something that they really take credit for, you know, and they really give you an environment to succeed academically? Do, do the coaches hold you accountable for those grades? You know, so, so the, the, making sure that you're looking somewhere for the best overall student athlete experience that you can get. Okay, so this is the breakdown of where Fusion is at with percentages of different levels that they currently play. So at ECNL, we're looking at sending 60 70% of our kids to D1, um, 30 to 40 Division 2 and Division 3. At RL, we're looking at 10 to 20% go D1, 40 to 50% go D2, D3. Uh, the others might just not, not be uh, choosing to play in college. And then Premier, D1, 1%, D2, D3, 30 to 40%. Juco NIA 5%. So that's our breakdown currently right now. Obviously, it can change a little bit year to year, um, but that's where if you want to play D1 and you're around here, the, the next step in your mind is just, how do I get here? How do I get to, how do I get from Premier to RL? And then from there, how do I get to RL to ECNL? Just to, again, when we're talking about the most exposure you're going to get to the Division One coaches is ECNL. This is just a just a graphic of where we've um, the big programs that we've sent some of our alum to that are currently playing. Yeah, these Division One programs, and then this is our class of 2021. Okay, we already have 14 committed in our 22 class. So a lot of the questions I'm getting right now from you guys is how do I get exposure? Um, so you cannot wait for schools to reach out to you. You have to be willing to do the groundwork. OK, so you kind of got to recruit yourself, you know, so collaborating with your club coach and me to help find you the right fit and then partnering up with College Fit Fund and make sure that brochure is crisp clean, concise with information, get into ID camps, sending emails, a lot of emails, and making good highlight videos. Okay, so, so constantly emailing coaches, your schedules, developing that list and emailing that list constantly, and then trying to get as many coaches out to your games as we can. But getting yourself at ID camps that you feel like is a, is a good fit for you too, that's, that's a great way to get yourself in front of the coaches. It's just an example of an email. So it's very, very simple. OK, just hi, coach, last name, information about yourself. I would always put something personable about their school because they don't want it to look like a generic email. They see generic email, they think. Delete, she's not actually interested in us. You know, so, so just writing something personal can go a long way. For example, if they won the conference last year, congrats us on winning the conference or congrats on your last game as we're in season right now. Um, or I really like your business program at such and such school. Um, or I have family in the area, so I, I really am looking to go to X, Y and Z college. And just think a bit personal about their school to let them see, okay, she is actually really interested in us. She's personally emailing us. This email is not going to everyone. Um, and careful when you do copy and paste, as you, you obviously will be copy and pasting quite a lot of these emails. If you put the wrong school or wrong coach name in that email, it is most likely going to get deleted. So be really, really careful 
when you're sending these emails out. All right, so highlight videos. Every, uh, um, every level one team should be getting some video one way or another. Okay, if, you, if you're at the stadium at Bryan Park or field two or field seven and eight, you're playing in those places where you have Spideo, so that it should be filmed. Um, and at Tourist Park, that's field one, two, and three, they will have Spideo as well. So that they should be getting filmed to every team. Okay, so, so make sure you're, you're cutting those films, making those highlight videos. Show your best self. Make sure your clips make you look good. So trim the film and make it focus on you, not your teammate. It's the highlight videos for you. Okay, so, so trim it. Make sure it looks good. Just make sure what you're doing is looking good. I watched a highlight video the other day. It wasn't someone from Fusion, but in the highlight video, the player turned the ball over 10 times. Uh, a coach that sees that, delete. You know, so make sure it's the best clips of yourself. You're showing your best self. You're connecting the passes, goals, assists, um, stuff like that. So most teams will have access to video. I said, um, highlight yourself on the field for every clip. So put a circle around yourself, a little light, um, arrow. Just make sure the coach knows who you are. And then separate in sections, for example, 1v1s, distribution, goals, assists, whatever it is your strengths are and you've got the best clips of, just put it into little sections. So I'll give you an example of a great highlight video from one of our alums who is now at Wake Forest. She actually was, she got to Wake Forest because of this highlight video. Because at the time she was injured, so the only way that Wake Forest could see her play was through this highlight video. And some game video. Okay, every clip, she highlighted herself with a circle. Now we've got um, breakdown of different areas, so aerial challenges, supporting the build up. Nice little music in the background. Okay, phone calls and communication. Do's. Um, when you reach out, don't get discouraged if you don't get a response straight away. College coaches are very busy people. Um, they they work um, probably 48 weekends out of 52. So they are very busy. Don't get discouraged. Just keep keep them informed. Continue to send schedules highlights until you get a no okay keep keep get, keep your name on their radar keep your coaching college recruiting coordinator in the loop of all conversations with college coaches so please when when a college coach reaches out let your club coach know let me know and we can go from there 
uh, for phone calls, make sure you're engaged, present and polite, be prepared, do some research on the school. So you can add little snippets into your conversation. That way the coaches know, okay, she's invested in us. She, she is actually interested. Um, have, have a couple of questions ready and be yourself. Just be yourself. Don't be, uh, don't be nervous. Again, they're reaching out to you because they're interested in you too. So be yourself. And also, if you do decide to go to that school, it is important that they know who you are so you can thrive there. All right, don't. Uh, do not have your parents be your communicator. Coaches want to hear from you. You'll be going into college at 18. You know, so you, so you are starting to become an adult and the only person that they're going to they're going to have in their office when there's an issue is you. So you got to start being the one to take charge. OK, you got to start taking charge of your future. You got you got to be the one that's reaching out, not your parents. Do not say no to any coaches before hearing them out. You never know what you're missing out on if you don't allow the opportunity to have a conversation. Keep all options open until you commit, you're a free agent. Okay, so even if you're not interested in that score, just having a conversation just opens your mind up to the possibilities. Because there might be something within that conversation that catches your attention and you're like, oh, I actually like that. Maybe I'll go check it out. You know, so so just, just have the conversation. It's always good practice to to have a conversation that way you're going to be feel more comfortable every every chat you have with a college coach right. visits unofficial visits even though it's a planned visit through the coaching staff the visit is at the entire expense of the student athlete so they cannot pay for anything on an unofficial on an unofficial visit meals travel it's all on you. Um, you can, it can be multiple per institution. So you can have 10, of, 10 unofficial visits to the same institution. Each PSA can take as many unofficial visits as they want to any institution. So just we just asked, do not miss a club game for an unofficial visit. Any kind, of, any kind of plan visit shows that they are interested in you. If they are, are willing to have you on campus and plan a visit, because even though it's not as documented as an official, it's still documented. Okay, they're still taking time out to have you on campus. So that does show that they are interested in you. All right, officials, usually at the expense of the institution, either males travel or both. It just depends on the resources of that institution. So every institution is different, every program is different, but usually they will pay at least for your meals, maybe your travel, maybe both. All right, 48 hours is a maximum time. The institution is limited to have the PSA on campus. So you can only be on campus for 48 hours. Every institution is limited to one official visit per PSA, unless there is a coaching staff change. So if, the head co if there's a head coaching change, you are allowed to take another official visit to that same institution. If not, you're only allowed to take one, which means they usually wait until you are committed for an unofficial visit, um, as they only get one. And they usually programs will bring all the commits in for an official visit over one weekend. Um, each PSA is limited to a total of five. So you only get five official visits at D1. So you must be selective. If you have a lot of demand, remember you only get five. It's just some tidbits about offers and NLI. I'm not going to read through all of this, but um, just that it's a binding agreement between a prospective student athlete and the institution. The PSA agrees to enroll as a full-time student to the institution for one academic year. So an NLI is only one year. You re-sign every single year. Uh, 
And then this is just a page of some resources to help along the way. So that's where we talked about NCAA Eligibility Center. If you want to go Division One or Division Two, it's very important that you sign up to the NCAA Eligibility Center and get that ID number for yourself. All right. Okay, and that is it. Does I know it's kind of a lot of information, um, but again, I we will put this in our resources tab, so you can just click on the presentation and refer to anything you have a question about. And if it's not on there and you don't see it, please, please, please reach out to me and your club coach. Again, keep us informed in within your process. We we need to know what's going on so we can help you. If you don't let us know, then we can't help you. And between all of us coaching staff, we know a lot of college coaches. Um, does anyone have any questions? Any questions about any anything within the presentation? Uh, any confusion? All right, great. Well, thank you for your time tonight. Um, and again, please, please keep us in the loop. Please reach out. Um, we're excited that you're on here because that means that you have aspirations to play in college. Um, and I, we're all a big believer in what college athletics gave us as staff. Um, so we're here to help. But thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your Sunday evening and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, guys.